Hey, it's Alyssa from RomeWise, your go-to guide to Rome. On today's video, I wanna give you my top 10 tips for getting the most out of your visit to Rome. If you're new to my channel, RomeWise is your go-to guide to Rome where I bring you the best of Rome and sometimes beyond with lots of great things to see and do, wonderful places to eat and drink, and plenty of secret spots along the way. So please subscribe and hit that like button while you're at it. All right, tip number one, plan ahead. Yeah, I know this seems obvious. As somebody who ran a bed and breakfast for nearly 20 years, I can tell you most people would arrive here and just say, I've just been so busy, I didn't have time. I figured that I'd figure it out when I got here. Can you help us figure out what to do? Yes, I know we are all very harried and busy in our lives. We have lots going on and it can be exhausting trying to plan your trip. You wanna take a trip because you wanna have fun and the planning part can seem a little bit tiresome. On the other hand, I know that many of you come to Rome precisely because you want to see specific things like the Colosseum, the Sistine Chapel, and the Pantheon. So in my number one tip about planning ahead, all I suggest you do is make a very small plan that involves picking out the things you absolutely must see on your trip and then booking them. So at the time of this video, the Pantheon, still free, but you are required to book if you want to visit on the weekend. Some of the most popular sites in Rome, like the Colosseum, the Vatican Museums, where the Sistine Chapel is, and the Galleria Borghese are all sites you can book in advance, and I suggest that you do so to avoid stress. All right, tip number two, don't overplan. I know, I just told you in the previous tip to plan ahead. The reason I said not to overplan is because whether you plan or not, I know from experience that many people who come to Rome and cities like Rome that have so much to see tend to want to try to pack it in and see as much as possible in the time they have available. And this is understandable. You're coming from a long way. You wanna to try to see it all. You have this bucket list. I get it. As somebody who lives here, I can tell you, I have not seen everything in Rome. I have not seen everything that I want to see in Rome. That being said, for a typical visitor, you're going to want to see some of the must-see sites, especially if it's your first time. So combining my first tip with my second tip, pick just the main things that you really, really want to see, book those, and then try not to plan too much stuff around that. Give yourself a break for enjoying some downtime, for some shopping, for some resting, or maybe just for strolling around or going back to visit something that you already saw. And don't be hard on yourself if you think that you really wanted to see a site and you just can't get to it. Hopefully, you'll come back. Tip number three, bring some clothes for layering. We are indeed blessed with some pretty mild weather here in Rome, but layering is a good idea pretty much any season. In spring and fall, which are the two most popular seasons to visit Rome, you will find that there could be some chilly mornings and evenings and maybe a little rain and maybe more pleasant and comfortable temperatures during the day. So you might wanna have a cardigan, um, a denim jacket, maybe even a rain jacket, a rain hat, things like that. So you can cover up in the mornings and in the evenings when the temperatures drop just a little bit. You would be surprised at how warm it can get during the day, even in in the dead of winter, if we have a sunny day and the temperatures are just a little bit warm, you can get really hot sightseeing, especially if you're all bundled up with really warm layers. And make sure to wear a good backpack, pickpocket proof if possible, uh, where you can keep those layers for when you wanna take them off. It's true, you are not gonna find cold weather in the summer. I mean, frankly, it's hot <laughs> morning, noon, and night here in summer, but you will need a scarf or you should bring a scarf with you for maybe when you're on the plane, I find planes can be cold, uh, but especially for visiting any holy sites. If you're gonna visit the Vatican, the Sistine Chapel, or any other Christian sites, any church in Rome, frankly, uh, you are going to need to have covered shoulders, and so a scarf is the perfect way to do that without getting too hot. Tip number four, wear super comfortable shoes and plan to do a lot of walking. I know this seems pretty obvious when people come to Rome, they do plan on doing some walking, but you will probably do way more walking than you imagined. Also, the streets and sidewalks here are not great for your feet. Many times we have sort of broken sidewalks. We also have these basalt stones that can be really, really hard on your feet and wreak havoc with your body. 
I have friends who live in Florence and they have come to Rome and said to me, oh my gosh, walking around Rome has killed me. <laughs> so the streets and sidewalks here, they're pretty tough and you should be prepared for them. Tip number five, cash is your friend. Yes, in this day and age, of course, people are using credit cards more and more, especially post COVID. Many companies that didn't used to take credit cards now do. People enjoy that cashless, that touchless experience. So the first part about my tip about cash is not to bring too much cash with you. You do not want to be traveling with a lot of cash or walking around with a lot of cash. If you are not coming from Europe and you don't have any euros on you, I would suggest going to your bank before you visit Rome and getting 100 euros worth of cash to come here with. Absolutely, the train stations and the airports have ATM machines, but those machines are not the same as bank machines and the exchange rates aren't as good or the fees are high. Also, just in case there is some glitch and you somehow can't find or, or make one of these machines work for you, you have cash to arrive with. If you have booked a car service or if you're taking a taxi or even the train, um, or let's say you just need to grab a quick snack while you're in the airport, it's just a good idea to arrive with a little bit of cash in hand. And while it is true, as I just said, that more and more companies are taking credit cards, and in fact, most companies now are required to have POS machines, there is still a mentality in Italy about cash. Cash is king. Um, small businesses, little mom and pop shops, you may find sometimes that their POS machine is broken <laughs> or they can't get a line or some, some such reason, but you always wanna have a little bit of cash on you just in case. Tip number six, to eat well, avoid eating on a major tourist piazza. You guys, we have so many beautiful piazzas here in Rome where you will find cafes or restaurants. I know it's super tempting to just sit there, have your dinner and gaze at a monument. And I do this, we do this with my friends here in Rome. We have a drink, a drink and some snacks called an aperitivo. But eating a meal is another matter. There are just not great quality restaurants on these piazzas. I'm sorry to say this, but they're really not. They're sort of mediocre and sometimes they're pretty bad. I realize that you may not care about this. It's possible that you just want to enjoy staring at the Pantheon while you have a plate of pasta or some pizza. Obviously, that's up to you. I would avoid using websites like Yelp and TripAdvisor to tell you where to eat because you have to consider who is leaving those reviews. Even if they are authentic reviews, how do you know that you have the same taste as the people leaving the reviews? The best way that you can find really authentic restaurants in Rome is to ask a local. So I consider myself a local. Please check the RomeWise website, but also, you can ask your taxi driver. You can ask your hotel concierge. Just ask people as you make your way around Rome where they like to eat. Where's their favorite place to go on a Friday night? Where's their favorite place to go out for pizza with friends? Tip number seven, don't pay for water. I know this may be tempting when you are walking around in the heat and you're sightseeing and you're hot and thirsty and you see these big carts and people are selling water or you see the guys selling water. By all means, if you want to support these economies, go ahead, but you will be paying two to three euros for a small bottle of water. The reality is that you can drink really cold, delicious, clean water for free all over Rome. The water comes down the mountains and over the aqueducts into Rome, and you will see it in these fountains that we have all over Rome called fontanelle, which means little fountains. Uh, they are also called nazone, nazoni, plural. Um, which means a big nose. One thing I recommend if you're visiting Rome in a hot season, bring with you a collapsible water bottle. And speaking of paying for water, so you know, when you visit a restaurant and you order water, typically they will bring you bottled water. They'll ask you if you want flat or fizzy. You can ask for tap water and not pay for it if you want. All right, tip number eight, don't over tip. Italy does not really have a tipping culture or economy. The reason for this is because when Italians work, they have a contract where they have full pay, months paid vacation, sick time, etc., etc., etc. So they are not depending on you for their income. Now, nobody will be offended if you tip. So if you want to tip, if you want to tip, if you just can't help yourself and you want to tip 20%, 25%, um, because that's what you're used to and it makes you feel uncomfortable not to do that, go right ahead. You're not offending anybody. But in some cases, you really don't need to tip at all. And if you are going to tip, I'm going to give you just a quick rundown on how much to tip. 
if you go to a bar and you order a coffee and you pay euro for it and you get 10 cents change back, you go over to the counter, you put your receipt down and the 10 cents change and that's your tip. You can just say, can I have a coffee please? Here's the 10 cents and that's it. So bottom line, at a bar when you pay for something at the register and you go stand at the counter and you order it, you can leave some pocket change as a tip if you like. If you are sitting down at a cafe, you are going to pay more to sit down and that is the price you pay for the service so you don't need to tip. Although again, you can if you want to. When you take a taxi, in particular a white metered taxi, literally zero tip is expected. I always round up to the nearest euro and they always thank me for doing that. So they are not expecting a tip. Again, you're not offending anybody if you do. On the other hand, if you order a private car service and that person helps you with your luggage um, to the cruise ship, to the airport, uh, five to 10 euros is sufficient for two to three people. Likewise, if you hire a private guide, you can always tip if you want to, depending on how much you've paid for the tour, if you're happy with the guide. This is really wide ranging and is entirely up to you. You could not tip because again, it's not expected, but anything that you do tip will be appreciated. If you want my suggestion, a good rule of thumb could be 10 euros per person that's on the tour for a private guide. At a sit down restaurant, you go sit down, you have a server who brings you pasta and some wine and some dessert. Among my friends, among all the people that I know here in Rome, what we always do is leave one euro per person at the end of the meal. You could round this up if it's eight of you, you could leave 10 euros or if it's particularly messy or if you've given them a lot of extra work to do, you could always give them a little bit more tip if you want to, but usually one euro, maximum two euros per person is more than enough. Tip number nine, avoid the crowds and the lines by visiting sites early and late. The Vatican is the big exception to this, and I should say specifically the Vatican museums. There are many, many tours that offer early bird visits and there are many people who have in mind, I think I'll go to the Vatican Museums really early and try to beat the crowd. So the Vatican Museums are super busy early. But for most sites like the Trevi Fountain, the Colosseum, the Pantheon, if you go first thing in the morning, right when they open, well, the Trevi Fountain doesn't open, but if you go first thing in the morning, you will find much fewer crowds than if you go around, let's say 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, etc. Tip number 10, stay in the historic center. If you're visiting Rome on a short break and you are trying to pack a lot of things in, staying in the historic center is going to save you time. You will be closer to the sites, you will not have to spend as much time, money, and energy getting to them and back to your hotel, apartment, B&B, whatever. For people who are staying for at least a week or longer, you may want to consider something a little farther from the center. Perhaps you're exploring a lesser known neighborhood or you're here in summer and you want to stay someplace with a garden or a pool, that's fine. Well guys, I hope you've enjoyed my top 10 tips for visiting Rome. You can find so many more tips on the website. I just wanted to give you what I think are some basic things that you can do to increase your enjoyment and decrease your stress when you visit Rome. So please subscribe, hit the like button, and we will see you at the next video. Ciao for now.